Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be running through exactly who we think uh, the best Rangers 11 ever is. Now, I'm expecting Snagsy here, uh, host of We Welcome the Chase podcast, to absolutely school me because look at him. He's got a retro Rangers shirt on. He's got his Rangers memorabilia in the background. He is ready and rearing. Hello, Snagsy. Want to introduce yourself? Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Snagsy from the We Welcome the Chase podcast. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> this has been a difficult one for me because... All of the best Rangers players ever. Unfortunately, I, I missed that bus. You know, I, I came in the late 90s, 1997 to be precise, 1st of December snacks if you want to get me a present this year. Um, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's going to beat me, but Snagsy, let's start off. Formation-wise, which formation did you go for? I have gone for a classic 4-4-2. Four, four, Guess what I've gone for, Snagsy? 4-4-2? Uh, four, four, yeah, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I, tried, I, I did a little uh, trial previously on a, a Facebook page. We are the people. Great Facebook page. You should check them out. Um, I, and I put uh, like this stupid formation that I thought would work, like three one two one three or something like that, and it just got ridiculed. So, uh, right, let's start off in goal. I get a feeling I know who you're going to say. Uh, I've gone for Andy Gorham. Fantastic. So have I. Uh, in going for Andy Gorham too. Moving on to the left-back position. I've got Sandy Jardin. you got Sandy Jardin. Left-back, I have gone for Sandy Jardin too. Uh, exactly why was it that Sandy Jardin topped anyone else for you? Quite simply, um, just for who he is as a man and who he was as a player on the park. Um, you know, Sandy Jardin was was you know described as unplayable when he was when he was on his game, and during the 75, 76, 77, 78 seasons back to back, they won domestic treble domestic trebles with him in the team. So that you know, and you know, he's going to go down in history as well for his work that he's done for the fans behind the scenes at the club, the famous march to yep. Hamden and, 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 and stuff like that. The guy was a total legend and there's no way that anybody could really keep them out of their greatest Rangers eleven. Yeah, okay, yeah, I completely agree with that as well. Uh, not just a legend on the pitch, but a legend off the pitch as well. Complete and utter gentleman and I believe his ashes still remain at Ibrox, don't they? Which is uh, where they belong. Um, now, for centre-back, I started off with a man who's out of favour with the fans at the moment, actually. I went for Terry Butcher. Mainly because Terry Butcher, when you get like when you get past what's happened uh, recently with him, he was one of the best defenders in the world at the time. The best defender England had to offer. Whilst playing for us, he was captaining England. Um, he was the man you wanted at the back, the Rambo, and he was absolutely famous for having a bandage around his head and playing on just like that Perso did. The kind of warrior mentality, just the one player you really wanted at the back. What about yourself? Who's your first centre back? I've gone for David Meikle John who uh, played for Rangers in the 1920s. Why, only five years ago in London, I saw the greatest game of my life. Arsenal v Rangers. You'll remember that match all right, David. Yes, I'll never forget it. I played it. But what greater thrill can a lad get than to play for his country? I still hear ringing in my ears yet the roar of the crowd at Hamden and Wem. Um, the reason I've chosen him is because not only did he make it into the Scottish Football Hall of Fame, uh, he also, during his time at Rangers, won 12 league titles and three Scottish, no, five Scottish Cups. And a wee um, fact about Andy Gorham, actually, before we move on. Did you know that in his first season at Rangers, he kept 26 clean sheets? I didn't. That is fantastic. There you go. That's absolutely sensational. That's why we call him the goalie. Um, my other centre-back, I went for a pretty obvious choice. The greatest ever Rangers, voted by both Rangers fans and players alike. I went for John Gregg. How about yourself? So, 
Same here, mate. He was uh, famously captain the uh, European Cup Winners' Cup team to, to, to glory in 1972 in Barcelona. Yeah. Now for right back, it wasn't specifically a right back of a player, but I personally think it's a player that needs to get in this Rangers team for me. It is uh, Richard Goff. who played 10 years for Rangers in one stint and then came back for another season, a total of 11 years, whilst maintaining one of the highest footballing standards in the country. He played for his um, hung hungry. He played for his country, Scotland, uh, numerous times and also played for Tottenham Hotspur before Rangers. What about yourself? I've gone for, again, not a natural uh, right back. I've gone for Derek Johnson. Yep. Um, literally because I was struggling to fit him in anywhere else, but he'll most likely be remembered for the goal that Tom likes to remind us of on, on Rangers TV, where he scored the header in the League Cup final against Celtic, aged just 16 in 1970-71 season. Sensational. So, moving on to the left mids, I simply had to put this player in. I went for Slim Jim Baxter. Now, our mutual friend, uh, Tom Miller, as I'm sure you know, absolutely rates Jim Baxter, as do I. He puts him down as one of the best Rangers, if not the best Ranger ever. Uh, what was your left mid choice? I've gone for Brian Lowdrop. Yep. Um, uh Mostly because he was sensational um, and obviously he's well noted for turning down Barcelona to, to stay with Rangers and he famously said to Walter Smith that he would much rather be playing against Falkirk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Famous Walter and, Smith. Exactly. And also... Yeah, that's, that, that's um, quite so, a popular Rangers meme. Uh, yes, it is. Um, I would expect if a meme were to be constructed and spread about social media, that would be it. Um, mm. And also, you know, he was part of the nine in a row team. Um, who can forget that? And he scored that marvellous header against uh, Dundee United to clinch the league title. So, I like uh, Moving on to my two centre mids now. I went for Paul Gascoigne and Brian Lauder. The reason why I put these two at centre mid, despite the fact that most of their careers they played their trade uh, as wingers or left right mids, they actually could play at centre mid, and I prefer them there because they had the open space in front of them. And open space is something that both Brian Laudrup and Paul Gascoigne absolutely thrived on. They could take on any player, no matter who you threw in front of them. And I think the more opportunities they had to do that, the better they would be. What about yourself? I've gone for Paul Gascoigne and George Alberts. Now, for the right mids, um, I, I couldn't miss this guy at the team. Uh, if I were to play three up front, I'd have actually put him on the left wing instead of the right wing. But I went for Super Duper David Cooper. We all know 
know that David Cooper had the left peg of dreams, uh, which is why he could personally he could cut in and then shoot, which is uh, what some of the best wingers and strikers in the world do. I could not leave him out of the team. One of my dad's favourites, and that's why it rubbed off on me ever since a young age. Agreed, mate. Um, and I'm exactly the same as you again. <laughs> Uh, David Cooper played played for the team that he loved, um, and obviously nobody will forget two famous goals that he scored. One was um, the solo effort against Celtic, which I think was oh, yeah. voted um, number two uh, best goal in the world at the time, with only Diego Maradona's goal beating him. Um, and I think it was in the Times, mm. and also his free kick against Aberdeen, where Aberdeen. He, yeah, he um, he famously. Um, Scored against oh, fuck, what was his name? Jim Jim Layton, and at the end of the game, he went up to him. Jim Layton went up to Cooper and said, um, "I nearly got a hand to that." And David Cooper said, "I on the way back out." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, no keeper in the world was getting to that whatsoever. Ah. Um, also, with David Cooper, uh, very very sad uh, day that he died in 1995. He was recording, I think, some sort of training video or something like that, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, um, absolute shame there. Now, the, the, the two strikers. I'm glad that I managed to make room for two strikers in my team. And I think everyone can guess who one of them is going to be. And if you are around the 70s, 80s era, you could guess who the other one was going to be as well. My two strikers, despite the fact that one of them could play in defence, as you said, uh, I've gone for Ali McCoist and Derek Johnson. Well, Celtic letting McCall get away. McCoy! He scores! on the 45 minutes against all the odds Both of them are, are legends in their own right. Recently, once again, Ali McCoy has fallen out in favour for a lot of the fans, but that does not change his history with the club whatsoever. It doesn't change what he did. Um, two times in a row, that's uh, two seasons in a row, he won the uh, European Golden Boot. Other players to do that were the likes of Eusebio Di Stefano. Um, that puts him up, uh, up there with one of the best players in Europe at the time. Also, Derek Johnson, legend, as I said, uh, on and off the pitch, even currently, despite the fact that nowadays he's being berated on the daily by Chris Sutton, he still remains a club legend. Agreed, mate. And I've gone for McCoyst as well, who obviously scored 251 Man. goals and 418 appearances in the league. Um, and like you say, you know, he, won the golden, he, he won the Golden Boot twice. Uh, nobody could really match him, really. He was... He was um, Amazing, and we only we only spent I think it was one hundred and eighty thousand pound. He cost us transfer. Mm. Um, that was from is, uh, Sunderland, was it? No, I don't think it uh, was. It Sunderland. I need to check. Hang on, let me have a look. Or did he leave us to go to Sunderland? Well, he left us to join Kilmarnock. I thought it might be Sunderland then that he came from. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's have a look. Saint, uh, yeah, Sunderland. You're right. Well done. You know your Ali McCoist. Your Ali McCoist facts. Uh, I think, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you've been educating me on the rest of the video. Also, fun fact about David Cooper, one of the world's best players, and he will remain there forever, both David Cooper and Rude Hullett. Rude Hullett stated that David Cooper is the best player that he's ever seen play. Coming from Mr. Sexy Football himself, that's his own words, not mine, can I just say. <laughs> so, um, to clarify... Um, my team is Gorham and Goal, left back Goth, centre back Butcher and Greg, left mid Baxter, two centre mids Gascoigne and Laudrup, right mid Cooper, two strikers McCoist and Derek Johnson. And I've gone for goalkeeper Gorham, defence of Derek Johnson, John Greg, David Miko, John, Sandy Jardin, midfield of Cooper, Gaza, Alberts and Laudrup, and up front uh, Mark Haley and Ali McCoist. I don't think I actually said Mark Haley the last time I hit you, but he didn't and finish my conversation for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got to get in there quickly, mate. You know that by now. I do. I so Mark Haley uh, was my other striker. 115 goals in 222 games. 92-93 season was his, probably his best season where he'll be remembered for that game in the, Euro the European Cup against Leeds where he scored that headed goal, but also the left... Oh no, it was McCoy that scored the headed goal. The left foot volley from 25 yards out, and almost impossible angle, fantastic finish. And, and he set up uh, the McCoist header with pinpoint accuracy in the cross, man. Brilliant. Mm. Um, I think the two that you put up front, uh, would you call them the most formidable uh, partnership Rangers have ever had? I would say at that time, yes. Mm. Yeah. 
I, I completely and utterly agree. So, uh, whoever you think is better, uh, comment below. Or if you've got any improvements or preferences whatsoever, make sure that you comment in the comment section down below. If you'd like to subscribe to the We Welcome the Chase podcast, uh, you can search for us on YouTube by searching for We Welcome the Chase podcast, or you can head over to our website if you like audio and want to subscribe to us on iTunes, Android, that sort of thing, which is www.wwtcpod.com. And I do believe, Ben, you will be joining us on Wednesday night for I the first indeed. podcast of 2017. Ooh. Oh, if you don't want to get your fingers out and type in, you know, We Welcome the Chase podcast, because it's a really long channel name, I'll also leave them in the description. Just make sure that you subscribe. They are utterly hilarious but don't tell snagster i said that anyway for the meantime we're going to say goodbye uh, there should be a couple of videos coming out this week there's uh, some video footage left over with tom miller um one of them he explains how to be uh, a rangers tv commentator what he did and another one he berates chris sutton which is going to be amazing so make sure you stay tuned for those do you want to see more of ben's wee napper well like and subscribe for more jazz content